Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson on sequences. Today we are going to be looking at investigating quadratic patterns. But before we get into that, I'm going to ask you a few questions just to get those brain juices flowing. So, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever thought about patterns that occur in real life? Or if patterns can link to certain situations? Or could I even use patterns to explain something happening at the Olympics? Well, you're going to have to stay with me during this lesson to see what that is. So let's have a look at today's concept map. Firstly, I'm going to do a bit of revision on concepts that are relevant to sequences, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Then I'm going to revise the definition of a linear pattern, where the first differences are equal. Then I'm going to introduce the concept of a quadratic pattern. And in a quadratic pattern, the second differences are equal. But first, let's have a look at some general definitions. Will you follow on the board with me, please? So the first one that we are going to look at today and revise is a term number. And that refers to the position of the term in the sequence. Tn is the nth term of the pattern where n is the term number. So if I say t1, and we can see here that 1 is in the nth position, that means that it's the first term of the pattern. So t1 is the first term of the pattern. And if I say t3, that means that it is the third term of the pattern. So we can see t1 had n is equal to 1, and t3 had n is equal to 3. Hopefully everyone's with me so far. So if I said t63, that would be the 63rd term of the pattern. Let's have a look at our next definition. We are now going to talk about term value. And that refers to the actual value of the term. So if I say tn is equal to the actual value of the term, we're going to actually have a number present here. Okay, sorry, that u looks a bit like an n. Let's make it into a u, everybody. So we're going to actually have a number there. T7 is equal to 334 tells us that the value of the seventh term is 334. So just the statement alone that T7 is equal to 334. The 7 is the term number, and the 334 is the term value. Great, so let's just think about some other hypothetical examples. If I say T10 is equal to 700, that means that the 10th term has a value of 700. Great, hopefully everybody's with me so far. Let's have a look at our next slide. So the next thing that I'm going to revise with you is that of a common difference. The common or constant difference, and we denote it with a D. So if you see a D in patterns, we're talking about a common difference. So the common difference is the difference between any two consecutive terms in a linear sequence. So please, please remember that a linear sequence has the property of a common difference. Wonderful. So if you're sitting at home thinking, well, is there an example of this? Let's just say if I had a pattern going 3, 6, 9, 12, I'm sure you'll all agree with me that each time I am adding 3. So that means that my common difference is 3. Wonderful. Let's look at the next slide. 
So another general concept or the next definition is general term. And the general term is a mathematical expression that describes the sequence and that can generate any term in the sequence by substituting in different values for n. So if I break that down into other words, it essentially means that we can write a mathematical rule for our pattern using Tn and n that can help me describe the whole pattern and how it works. But don't worry, we're going to do more examples later to actually illustrate this concept. Great, let's look at the next slide. So, when we are going to define a way that we can calculate common difference, we've already discussed that a common difference is one of the main characteristics of a linear sequence. There is a way that I can actually calculate that. So, the common difference is equal to T2, so that's term 2, minus term 1. But I could also write it as T3 minus T2. But also, if I simplify it, I could say it's equal to Tn minus Tn minus 1. So, if we think about the pattern that I gave you earlier, which was 3, 6, 9, 12, I can see that I could find the common difference by taking the term, or let's say we're taking T2 over here, which is 6, and subtracting 3, which will equal 3. If I take three term 3, which is 9, and I subtract term 2, which is 6, I again get 3. So hopefully everyone will agree with me that the common difference can be found by taking a term value and subtracting the term value that comes before that. So I'm just going to circle that definition for us again. We take the term value and we subtract the term value that comes before it. That is the common difference of a linear sequence. Okay, we are going to go shortly to an ad break, but as soon as we're back, I'm going to do an example of a linear pattern. And after that, I'm going to define a second difference. This is an example of a first difference behind me, but we'll talk more about that shortly after the break. See you soon.